Hey everybody, this video we're going to talk about getting an individual resource from MongoDB. So this is going to be a follow-up to our parameterized URLs video, which we did in the last video. So now we can provide an ID through the URL. How do we take that value and get a specific item from MongoDB with a filter and then return that to the user? This video is sponsored by Ultra Edit, which is an editor available for Mac and Windows. Extremely customizable. You can set it up exactly how you wish. Different themes, different toolbars, different options. With support for the major things needed in software development, such as full Git integration, searching, FTP, and more. So check it out. I will drop a link down below. If you want to support this channel, you can give it a shot. So here we are in our code where we have this parameterized path with the ID and we were responding with just giving that data back to the user. I still want to see this. So what I want to do is instead of sending this as a response, I just want to console log it. So I'll say console.log and then we'll have that in our terminal over here just to make sure we're getting the correct data sent from the user. We can see that nice and easily. So the ID in the path, which is my preferred way of doing this, is going to come in to request.params. What that means is we could extract that value. So we could say const ID. And anytime I see something colored differently like that, I am going to name it something else because that is reserved. So we could just say customer ID, for example, and now you can see we're not getting that highlighting. So we know this is something custom. And then just say request.params.id. That is how we can get that value. And I'll just say console log customer ID just to make sure I'm not crazy. I'm a little crazy though. What can I say? All right, let me uh, update this path. And then over here on the terminal, you can see all of that data. So here is the ID and we can get that value and assign it to that variable customer ID. Now, just a little JavaScript life hack. If you are accessing some property on an object, you can do what's known as destructuring. And instead of saying request.params.id, you can put curly braces around your variable and then just assign it whatever you are trying to get it from. And then if there's a property that matches the name in that object, this will work. So basically it's just going to grab that ID from that object. So let me just send another request real quick. And you can see that worked the same exact way. Now, obviously with the way we set it up, I do now have a constant with the name ID. So if ID was important to you, we're kind of masking that or overriding that value. So not to get too off topic, but if you wanted, you could rename this with customer ID. So now at this point, we're not really saving any typing. And you could probably argue that this syntax is even potentially more confusing than what we originally had. But, you know, YOLO, we'll just give it a shot. Let me make a request real quick. And we can see that data show up over here in the terminal. All right, now I've totally gotten off topic. Let's go ahead and make a request to MongoDB. So we'll say const customer await customer dot find. But there's actually another option that we can use called find by ID and pass in the customer ID. You could also just use rec.params.id here directly if you wished. Then after this, let's go ahead and console log the customer just to see that data. And we can send it back in a response. So I'll just create an object. And again, with this little shortcut, if you put in the object like so in curly braces, it'll make a property called customer with the customer object as the value. Giving this a shot now, we send and you can see it does retrieve that data from the database. Okay, cool, so we can see that that is working. Another quick note on the destructuring that I did here. It doesn't really add a lot of benefit, but if we wanted to grab multiple values, so you know, if this was a bunch of different slashes, you could do that all here at once, creating multiple constants, so we don't have to take up as much space. So that's another benefit of using the destructuring and it's probably good to familiarize yourself with that. So what we need to do is consider the case of what if something goes wrong, there's an error, or if the customer does not exist. So let's go ahead and surround this in a try. And then what we can do is catch 
any errors that may show up. If there's an error, we'll set the status to 500 saying something's wrong with the server and we'll give them actually a general error message. I don't want to give them too many details, so we'll just say something went wrong. If you wanted, you could log some additional errors to yourself, you know, in a file or something. And don't be dumb, make sure you surround this in an object like so. Now I'm just going to clean up the formatting. It's not looking too pretty. That's a little bit better. So this is going to take care of things if something goes wrong. So for example, if we deleted a character here and hit send, you can see the error says something went wrong. So it caught that. All right, so we've taken care of the scenario where you pass in an ID, but this ID is not valid. Specifically in this case, it's not enough characters for MongoDB. But the user may or may not know that, or you know maybe there's a typo or a bug in whatever software they are writing to interact with your API. So that's why we give them an error saying, hey, something's wrong. You could give them more details if you wanted to kind of try and figure out what the problem is and tell them, or you could just tell them to uh, suck it up, try again later, reach support, whatever, whatever you want to tell them. But in the case that there is a correct length ID, but maybe that ID does not exist, it just says customer null but it says status 200 okay. Now, what you would typically do in this scenario is say status 404 not found. So all we really need to do is just to check to see if that customer data is null, and if it is, then change the status to 404. So here before we respond with the customer data, we can say if not customer, which will evaluate to true if the customer is null, and then what we can do is say res.status404.json and give them something else such as error user not found. And we actually wouldn't need quotes for that there, so I'm going to remove those. So now when we hit send, we get error user not found, status 404 not found. So this is a more proper way of saying that something did not go wrong, it's just that the ID was not found in the database. One last code change is the fact that when we say res.status404, we don't have an else clause, so it actually comes down to 64 and tries to send the customer. And we get this error, cannot set headers after they are sent to the client. So to fix this, what we can do is just say else, and then surround this section here. And I'll just go ahead and fix that indentation, and now, we still get the user not found, which is to be expected because that comes first. And we are not getting any error in the terminal from trying to set the headers again. That's all I got on this one. Hopefully that's helpful. In the next video we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about updating customer data or any kind of data through the API. Very important, very good video, so stay tuned. Well, actually, I don't know if it's a good video because I haven't actually made it yet, but statistically speaking, based off of prior videos I've made in my life. Probably gonna be pretty awesome, so stay tuned.